So I'd like to run through the Coot Crowium tutorial, the modern one, uh, using the new version of Coot that's available now. It's called Coot Experimental. That's how you'd find it on the website. The source code is available from GitHub. It's also known as Coot 0.9 pre-release. There are various binaries available uh, from my website, also CSPEM. These tutorials uh, are in uh, called Basic and Main Cryoem tutorials in the Coot website under the tutorials tab. So let's start off by customizing our Coot. Um, at the moment, you use the curly interface to bring up the extension wrangler and using the extension wrangler I'm going to install a few extensions and when I install selected they will download them, install them and then grey them out when they are working. The other way we're going to, oh that gives us uh, the refine and morph uh, tabs at the top there. The other way we're going to modify our interface is uh, add a button that uses the functions that we've just downloaded. It's called long refine. Uh, the function itself is called long refine uh, residues. It's a Python um, function. We can give it an icon and then save it to preferences and there you can see a button has appeared in the interface. The third way we can customize the interface is using the built-in um, extra tool buttons. So I'm doing sphere refine, tandem refine, back rub rotamers, uh, Repeat refine zone is a good one to add there. So there it is, there's our um, customized interface. So let's move on to the uh, second part, which is doing some model building. Uh, so we're going to run a script called demo box of button. The file for this is on the website under the files directory. Um, it gives us this box of buttons here. The button I'm going to press is called wonky n terminus. And as I do so, it will load in a map and a model and take us to the area of interest. Um, as you can see here, there's some model that doesn't fit the map. The map goes up the page and uh, the model takes a, a wrong turn. Uh, there's some warning triangles there telling us that the peptide's problematic. I'm going to make the map a little more blurry so that it mimics a Crowe map. We can't really see uh, the the side chains very well, a little nub perhaps, and you can't see the orientation of the uh, peptides in the main chain, typical for cryo. So what I'm going to do is use the interactive markup of Rotomers and Ramachandran plot uh, using uh, the see, Ramachandran markup and Rotor markup. That turns on spheres and dodecahedra for uh, Ramachandrans and Rotomers. Uh, you can see, there we go, and I need to now run the refinement called Long Refine. It's um, called Long Refine before, now it's called Long 5. Anyway, as I press it, some of the model goes into the map and some doesn't. Now I'm bringing the area of interest to the middle of the screen and changing the contour level to see where it goes, uh, rather than guessing. And now I'm pulling the atoms into the tube. I have a little bit of work to do here. Now we can see uh, that the atoms are more or less in the tube. We need to make the markup go green though. So here it isn't green and we can see uh, both the side chain and the main chain are wrong because they're both not green. The thing that we're going to fix first is the rotomer. So I click on fit rotomer, back rub fit rotomer and the dodecahedron goes green. And now the two carbon oxygens are pointing in the same direction. That's bad. In the piece of extended strand. So I'm going to flip one of those so it goes down and it gives us uh, a Ramachandran plot that's uh, more probable. Uh, we know that because the ball's gone green. I'm working my way back down the tube now and I'm going to yank on this side chain atom here and as I do so you can see the atoms of the main chain moving in response to the false position of the side chain. If I let the side chain atom go it relaxes into a confirmation that is uh, good for backbone and side chain. Here we have a side chain atom that is not green so I, I pull it through uh, as you saw there, a bit of pink markup, a clash, but it's now on the other side of the clash, and you can see that the dodecahedra has gone green too. So that looks okay to me. I'm going to accept it. Now, because we sharpened the map, we can now unsharpen it, uh, or the other way around. Because we blurred the map, we can now sharpen it again. I'm going to turn it back down to a zero, and having done so, look at the map and the model, and we can see that the model that we built fits uh, the map and we can compare versus the reference structure as well uh, and you can see that also matches uh, uh, pretty nicely and we got here 
this model by making the balls and the dodecahedra go green, which are high probability scores for uh, main chain and side chain. Moving on to the next part is the cleavage and polyadenylation factor map. Um, here we're uh, going to fit a domain. So this structure has come from Rory Passmore and colleagues. It's about 3.5 angstroms. Um, I have uh, mildly blurred the map, uh, having generated structure factors and then resampled them on uh, in CUT as one typically does when you read an MTZ file. You can use multi sharpen to do this. So this is the CPF map. You can see some uh, tubes there, some uh, beta strands, hopefully some uh, tertiary structure, maybe even quaternary structure. So what we're going to do is roughly fit the homologue and uh, beam it into place. Here it is. Um, you use jiggle fit to do that. One of these domains um, is what we're going to focus our attention on. So I've selected that, and here it is. Um, it's uh, about 20% sequence identity, so not the greatest uh, closest homologue. And you can see that many of the atoms don't fit into the map. So we're going to gen generate gemin mcclure restraints, or ProSmart restraints, or ProSmart-like restraints, because they're self-restraints. Um, uh, I've just undisplayed them there. Um, we'll follow them, follow them during refinement, which I'm turning on now. Um, as the refinement proceeds, you can see some of those go red, which means that they are longer in the current model than they were in the, in the prior model, which is the starting structure. And already you can see uh, that some of those strands are now falling into density, whereas they weren't before. And in fact, it's moving strands out of density and allowing new ones to come into density. And um, as we zoom out, then we can see that most of the structure is fitted in a way that it's no longer moving, not at least by eye, but there are some fragments, portions of the model that are still uh, moving around. I'm not doing anything to move those atoms on the east there, they're just minimizing. So that'll do, at least for the initial refinement. And already you can see that uh, many of the side chains are pointing into their knobs of density. Here's a fragment of the model that is obviously out, so I'm just going to tweak it into position, uh, rough and ready um, uh, refinement, uh, long five, and there it is. It, uh, uh, the tube of density sucks it into place. It's not ideal, but it's better than it was. Here's the other end of that uh, loop, and again we can see that it's uh, grossly wrong. Um, I'll just slim down the density a bit so it's a bit clearer where this tube goes. Uh, you can see there's an elbow at the top there that doesn't have density in the northwest corner there. Uh, so what I'm going to do, select uh, uh, by hand the atom selection from down there to southeast, and you can see that the northwest corner jumps into density already. Um, so now I'm just doing it roughly fixing the main chain, and now I'm going to fix the side chains, correct the side chains, that is to say. Or try to, but I'm failing because the prior knowledge restraints uh, strength is too high. And what I need to do is to come back to the refinement without uh, so strong a restraint. So it's fighting me. Okay. So uh, no longer are those strong restraints useful, um, at, not at this weight anyway. So what I'm going to do is show you that it's a pretty decent fit with the uh, strong restraints and come back again after I've reduced the weight of the restraints and we're going to fix a few features. So I've reduced the weight of the restraints now, I've changed the map to the high, I'm now changing the map to the high resolution and uh, subsequently changing the weight of the map to the higher the resolution, the lower the weight, generally speaking. So zooming into that strand again, it was problematic. We need the CFLC betas um, pointing into the tubes of the side chains, ideally. And it's currently not doing that, or the, the knobs of the side chains. So what I'm going to do is uh, twist it around a bit to yank it around, and hopefully, uh, yes, there they go. Those the side chains are now more in uh, the right place. But it's better than it was, but not super.
and if I twist that C beta into density, you can see that's a, that's a better fit than it was. Um, uh, and it's looking better all along the chain. Perhaps not everything is super ideal, but uh, it's better than it was. After that, we can accept it, and then um, we do the alignment against this 20% uh, sequence similarity, uh, add the side chains after the mutations, and do some another another round of real space refinement. Um, that's up to you, and uh, I'll leave you with that, so thank you.